Oh, nay, for what have we here? Look behind ye quickly, kind sir. It's the beast of legends. Luckily, I am a machine gun paladin. Oh, the day is saved. Oh, my god, villagers, you may <sighs> worship my ball. Good evening, Ladius, Lazos, and Lazos. Welcome to the click you smell. Absolutely. Amazing today, and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Oh my god. And don't think I forgot about you, Everest. Are you here looking at the video, Everest, thinking you're gonna chill by yourself and just watch some good old click content? I see you, Everest. Oh yes, you better behave. Everest. So anyway, today we're gonna do something glorious. It's been a while since we looked at D&D &D memes and everything quirky that comes along with fantasy universes and completely debauched friend groups. I do hope you're here for it, because like me, we have no friends except each other. Enjoy. Mwah. Also, please remember to cry BYB to the channel Iwanily. It's very important importanty. <laughs> God, I'm gonna burn in hell. <laughs> Uh, playing D&D &D with nine-year-olds comes in two flavors. Number one, trying to find ways to resolve things and make the zombie our friend. Number two, doing things that are recognized as war crimes. <laughs> there is no in-between. Befriend the monster or horrible war crimes. Oh my god, maybe the zombie will be our friend if we just gas the village. Oh, this took a turn really fast. Not very surprising with this video, though. Dungeons and Dragons. Top 20 D20 roles ranked. 20, 19, 18, 17. 17, 16, 15, 13, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, what's up with the, what's up with the 13, 14? That was very unexpected. I, I thought, I thought for a second there I couldn't count, but, but I think it's actually on purpose. Video games have a buffering. One of the DMs I play with has like 70 slips of paper that says loading with bits of random D&D mechanics advice. Partial cover grants plus 2 to AC that he slots into the DM screen when he needs to look something up, assemble something or think up a mechanic for player BS. That is so beautiful. I need to do this. I need to print actual physical loading screens. This is so good. Oh my God, my party is going to freak out. Conversations with the five-year-old dungeon master. Five-year-old dungeon master. It is a spider dragon. Uh, what, what, what's that? A massive black dragon with eight legs and big pincers dripping with poison. That is terrifying. It has a breath weapon. It breathes millions of tiny spiders at you. You know, I usually say that children are adorable and innocent and all that kind of stuff and they deserve protection. I take it all back. What is this nightmarish fuel? Oh my god! And they usually say, uh, kids are traumatized by things in their world and you know they shouldn't be exposed to the, 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 the. What about the stuff the kids made up? What about that? What about me? I give an offering of blood to call upon my patron, Kthunaket the Ravenous. Fulfill a pact and grant me the power to slaughter my enemies. Uh, same, uh, Mikhail, if you would. And where is my offering, pet? Uh, payment after, once we get some <clears throat> privacy. Oh, you tease. Uh -huh. I mean, if you want to, we could shut the frick up. It is every, uh, every, uh, uh, every warlock demon if, is a succubus. If you just want it really badly and try really hard. <laughs> mm, hard. The DM doesn't want you to know this, but the monster's weapons are free. You can take them home. I have 458 goblin simtars. This just reminds me of Skyrim. It's like when I waddle my butt back to Whiterun to sell like the 513 Falmer BS swords that I found in a crypt nearby. Like, can, can you walk faster, please? No, no, no. No, no. My 1,200 weight of BS swords that are worth like 12 gold each, I need to cash them in. It is muy importante. It's a good thing the NPCs aren't actually alive. They would have been some, so done with my BS. <laughs> Reading the Dungeon Master's Guide be like, follow these rules. Or or don't. I'm a book, not a cop. That is so true. I think the most important part, uh, if you want to play D&D for the fun of it, it depends on what kind of group you're into. But as with anything in life, you know, it's guidelines. And the most important thing is to have fun. If you think it's too complicated and want to make a homebrew version, go for it. If you want something that completely freaks out, go for it. If you want one singular exception, go for it. We had a flying ship. 
in one of my campaigns. It was absolutely glorious. And I had an owl bear called Pluffsy. I think I've told a couple of these anecdotes before, but they are worth retelling. So my special weapon with Pluffsy, my tame owl bear, was that when we had our flying ship and we you know, flew over a village or something, it's like, oh no, the village is being attacked by skeletons. What a shame. I would just tie a big rope around Pluffsy, slowly, slowly descend Pluffsy, and Pluffsy would just pendulum back and forth through the village and slaughter everything in its path, and then we could safely drop down from the ship. Because the owlbear was just based on the owlbear from the book, which means it wasn't balanced for characters at all, and was extremely overpowered to have in your party. Ah, <sighs> homebrew rules. Gotta love them. Femdom. Wanting to be dominated by a female. Wisdom. Wanting to be dominated by a wizard. Isn't it? Isn't it dominated by wisdom? It's an educational video, right? The DM trying to introduce moral decisions to the game. So it's a troll and if you pull the lever, one person dies, but you've also took part in it. What do you do? The players. You see, I simply just connect the track here so we kill as many as possible. <gasps> oh my god, why only save the village when we can both kill the dragon and get the loot and then also blow up the village? <gasps> Everyone wins, especially us. Norse mythology is basically just a really fun D&D campaign. If the Dungeon Master can't say no. Uh, a giant stole your hammer and you're going to pretend to be a woman and marry him to, to get it back? Frick it, roll for deception. That'd be so much fun. I need to do this. Just a D&D adventure and every character is based on like Norse mythology BS. Oh, I would so be Loki, man. B Barack Obama. Hi, can you join our D&D campaign? Mm, yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be such a good adventure. My god, I love this. Dead men tell no tales. <laughs> Wrong, your honor. As a necromancer, I literally summoned my first witness, the victim! <laughs> Can we just do this? Oh, I want something like this in my next D&D adventure. Usually when I construct adventures in D&D, I add some like random locations that are pretty fun that always have some kind of cool mechanic or something cool you can get from them. One time I added a casino, for example, and you can win stuff and it's an alternative way of getting key items in the campaign if you don't want to slaughter your way through it. And a lot of hidden mechanics. My players just went there, got drunk and lost all their money. But you know, it was the thought that matters, right? I want to add this, like a proper court. So if they commit too much stuff, they actually get arrested and have to win their way through a court case. Why am I not doing this? Oh my god. It's occurred to me that Bingo Night or Bridge Night at the Senior Center will probably... <coughs> will probably... Since when is probably a hard word click? Will probably be the D&D night when we get there and now I'm ready to retire. Can we just retire now, please? And I can just spend the last, what, 50 years of my life playing Dungeons and Dragons over and over? Oh, real life sucks. Can I just live in fantasy, please? Wizard. Ugh, I'm, I'm, I'm too drunk to walk or fly. Bard, I've got it, squishes the small jello cube. Dungeon Master, a gelatinous cube appears suddenly, engulfs the entire party, and brings you home. You lose 20 GP each. What, what, what was that fantasy taxi? It's called the gelatinous cuber. <laughs> I love that mechanic because it also has a pun in it. Lego Ideas partner with Dungeons and Dragons, celebrating 50 years of D&D. Oh my god, okay, it's happening, everybody stay calm. This is one thing in my life that I didn't know that I needed, but I so, so badly need. Please, can we make this happen? I want to construct my D&D little maps and stuff and have characters that are Lego pieces. It will make everything so amazing. Oh my God. I don't have to rely like on poorly photoshopping maps together anymore. It's going to be so good. I just imagine building a small village with like shop stands and everything in Lego and then can like move around. <sighs> Oh my god, I'm gonna dream about this tonight when I go to bed. My parents, can we try this Dungeons and Dragons stuff? Me, not unless everyone gets real cool about the bunch of stuff really quickly. <laughs> well, their Christian mother, how about that satanic succubus? <laughs> oh, yes. A dungeon master, 70s porn grade acting. Uh, uh, no, it seems I have grouped all these enemies within, <coughs> checks notes, 40 feet of each other, and they're way down in the initiative order. Our first time wizard who just got fireball. <gasps> is it? Is it for me? Oh, it is for you, little fish. Oh, yes. That is so good, though. Encouraging new players by, like, slightly staging certain things so they just get the satisfaction. I remember when I rolled a big crit for the first time. I was playing with a fighter dragonborn called Gandalf the Hard. Gandalf the Hard was very good at being violent and, uh, and was basically a middle-aged dragonborn out on adventure because he had a middle-aged crisis. And uh, first time I rolled a crit with this guy, it was absolutely bonkers because, like, every other advantage you can think of in the game applied. So I had like 12 dice or something. I just like kept rolling. I did like 60 damage. It was absolutely amazing. <sighs> 
core memories. Papers and dice. It doesn't get better than that. Players. We fought a hair-covered, necrotic zombie wizard in his cave under the sea, and each roll was determined by a flip of a coin simulating a nat 20 or nat 1. What the frick is this module called? Uh, Dungeon Master looks at notes. Uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Uh, promise you won't get mad. <laughs> That is so good! It will be actually painful to play through, but it's so good! It makes for memories for life. Oh. To make a basic character more interesting, give them a little quirk that conflicts with their archetype. Paladin. Self-righteous, stubborn, uptight, but horny. Wizard. Intellectual, unsociable, studious, but horny. Bard. Charming, handsome, friendly, but not horny. Warlock. A patron is a succubus, pays for powers with adult naughties. No tricks, no catch, but... Gay. Oh, oh my, this party is a complete disaster. Oh no. I would love for that to be like the dynamic though. It would be so much fun. Imagine you have like one warlock who's gay, one who's straight, and they both get paired up with demons that are like really hunky and smexy, but it's a, it's the wrong gender. And then of course, by the side, you have the bisexual <laughs> freaking warlocks. Just like, oh yes, indeed. All oh, the succubi. <laughs> <sighs> Privilege, I swear to God. Person. Reanimating corpses for use in battle is unethical. Necromancer. <laughs> but, but I'm recycling. Person. Now someone has to go and fight the corpses. I am uh, also, consequently, creating jobs. You laugh, but some necromancer is out as setting up a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, that is so good. You can also use it as a witness in case it's a murder. It's so beautiful. Necromancy has its perks. I try to use heat metal on the bones of enemies since calcium is a metal. Dungeon Master allows it. Rust Monster, rust away my bones to next combat. Rust was... Uh, huh? What was that? Oh, I'm imagining what that would feel like. Oh, that was a mistake. Brain, please. No, imagination, not the right time. New character. <laughs> Chaotic neutral. <laughs> what is that loser doing out there? NPC, please help. <laughs> I am chaotic. Oh, for good. <sighs> I swear to God, this is always how my characters end up. Uh, it always it always converges uh, un until it reaches a point where you are like in reality. Unless you try really hard. It's We tried to do this once with a couple of friends. We gave them characters. We made it for them. That were like completely outside their own personality. It didn't go too well. They basically killed the characters on purpose. <laughs> They weren't too grateful, no. They weren't too grateful. As we all know, red dragons breathe right channel audio, white dragons breathe left channel audio, and yellow dragons breathe video. Sorry, I had to draw this. Rawr! When the ruby and silver heads speak, those nearby hear whispers in their ears. And when the gold head speaks, the victims see visions. I, I guess? Yeah. That is so cool. It's like a psychic freaking telepathic dragon that's just based... On, uh, on old cables. I like this. This is so cool. I, I'm not sure if anyone would actually catch on to the Easter egg, but I would like to do it and just see if someone catches on. That'd be so fun. You have to be very specific about it, though, I think. It has to be like, you hear some weird ghostly whispers in your left ear, and and this caller is talking. Uh, you know, th that's the way to do it. Dungeon Master. Enough! Rocks fall! Everyone dies! Rogue. <laughs> I use evasion. <laughs> It's like, gee, there's an earthquake, the entire village falls into lava. What about roll for evasion? Shut up! Well, my mom is an orc. My father is a very ballsy half-elf. <laughs> oh, freak ya! <laughs> oh, that is amazing. I swear to God, with all the half-breeds in this game, humans are really into the habanka donka harkens mark and gadorkens activities. I think we're all in a dark place. I have dark! D&D Addicts Anonymous. Honestly, that would probably be, be quite necessary in certain groups, yeah. Why do I see so many people talking about peasants maybe making one gold piece a year, but a regular breastplate costs 400 gold? They're, uh, the, the economy is in shambles. <laughs> Is this the whole world suffers of mass inflation <laughs> because some adventurers came along and got super rich? I did this in a game that I played with a few friends where we actually had to nerf the value of gold coins because wherever we went, I would open up a new pub and and these pubs would generate so much gold that every time we started the session the dm was like okay let's see what's in everyone's inventory you have 12 gold you have seven gold and, and you there click your pubs made 730 gold since last session <laughs> and he just kept stacking it was amazing 
Man, being, being rich in fantasy is it, it's a vibe, man. Inside you, there are two wolves. They are using pack tactics to gain advantage and eat your liver. Oh my god, that can't be good because you can't live without your liver. It's in the name. I don't think that's why, but but I'm gonna memorize this as a biological rule because it's a pun. Feel free to use that one in school. Don't write it on a test. <laughs> The girl at the table being all quiet and not really getting involved in the roleplay. The same girl when you're not acting like an exclusionary a-hole. That is so true. Be inviting to anyone that jumps into the game. Some people can be a little bit socially awkward, especially if it is a new group that they're not into yet. And, you know, exclusionary might not mean that someone is doing something active all the time, but make sure to be inviting. You know, come to them if they are not willing to open up to an entire new group, because that can be scary for most people. Uh, so be inviting, like, directly. It is it is very much appreciated by, like, 99% of people. It is astounding. Ah, wholesome vibes. Players enjoying a feminist campaign where all the important NPCs are women. A female DM who just can't do male voices? Oh! Oh! Yeah, I think I think whenever I have adventures, every female character is just like a Karen. <laughs> They're just like, Oh my god, it's the heroes of the village. Welcome in, everyone! <laughs> the dragon is up there. <laughs> it's a little bit monotone. <laughs> King! So, you've killed my daughter, slept with a priest, and rescued the dragon? Eight intelligence paladin. Uh, bounty hunting is a complicated profession. You see, sometimes stuff just gets quirky. You just wanted to frick the dragon. Admit it. God, it's not only the bards that are horny little rascals. This Kustang. Me. There are no rules for fantasy, and that's the beautiful thing about it. Sure, there are staples of the genre, but a creator shouldn't feel bound by them. The only limits are your imagination. A fantasy game. The health potions are in thread. Me. You've lost me. You know, there's, there's, there's breaking the rules. That is fine. And then there's twisting the very fabric of the reality. And that is not okay. How to spot a chaotic evil Kenku player? Fun fact. Crows can talk just like parrots do. It requires a process called freeing their tongue. Don't ask. But yes, I want to train a flock of them to say, run, and release them onto a hiking trail. I, I want to ask, how many, how many nightmares do you want to give people? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> they will appreciate their day-to-day -day life much more when sleeping is horrifying. Leather, 11 AC. Plate, 18 AC. Can I just go into the local pub and just buy a bunch of plates? They can't be very expensive, right? Or we just rob the plates, just kill everyone and take the plates. And I just tie them to my body, glue them to my body with like, I don't know, dragon saliva or something. And voila, bada bing, bada boom, my armor has like 40 AC because there's a stack of plates. How about that? Huh? What, a, what about that game? Dungeon Master. Okay, you do suspect one of those people is a werewolf. What do you do? But I want to charm the werewolf into revealing itself. Oh, come on, we talked about this. No, 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 no. Hear me out. Hmm. Staring them down. Everyone looks innocent staring them down. Who's a good boy? <laughs> Got him! Shoot him! Party, so let's get this straight. You gave us nearly indistinguishable gold coins that eat other gold coins one per hour? Yes, the coin of greed. Who, who hurt you as a child? <coughs> oh. Oh, but also, I had a good idea about this, right? Something that struck my genius mind. What if you just separate the coins, right? You just buy a bunch of small leather pouches, you put the coins like two and two, and then the one that ends up alone is the cursed coin, and you can just toss it in the river. Wouldn't that just work? Unless you're so rich that, you know, you have so many coins that it's almost impossible. But as long as you only have like a couple of dozen gold coins, that is very much doable, right? That, that's a way to crack the system. Party, if you're watching this video, you are welcome. You and your character are both asexual, fighting a succubus. He starts tempting you with arcane knowledge instead? Oh no, please, not the veiny brain throbbing instead. Oh, mercy. Okay, 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 hear me out. Non-Newtonian slimes. AC goes up the harder you hit them. Um, that'd be hard, mechanically, considering you don't roll damage until a hit is confirmed. Well, you could do something like a certain AC, and they have to hit below that number. Wh what? Say the slime has 15 AC. You have to roll under that to hit it, otherwise it turns solid. Interesting! Hey, high-level characters, frick you! Ah, uh, literally. That is so horrible. 
What? This reminds me of those little slimes in Zelda that turns into stone when they go into light. That's actually how you kill them, so that's like a good thing in that case, but it really very much reminds me of that kind of mechanic. I was raised in a tribe of mercenaries. Bloods and warface, the only life I've ever known. I killed my first man when I was 10 years old. I've lost count of how many I've killed since. My track record is spotless. I don't fail. I don't miss. Ah, uh, one. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> that is so true. Imagine if it was like this in every fantasy movie. Imagine Legolas just standing there on the wall. Legolas, take him down. Just like, oh. <coughs> oh, sorry, sorry, Gimli. I guess one of us is dead now. That sucks. Levels of pain. Slap. Childbirth. Uh, wah. Kicked in balls. Campaign ends because DM doesn't feel like it. You know, the comments are gonna be arguing between the ball kicking and the pregnancy. You know, that, that's, that's gonna be like the main argument in the comments, I feel like. But forget about that and focus on important things! Oh my god. How could you, Dungeon Master? How could you betray your friends like this? Oh. I would say burn in hell, but that's too good for you. CR20 dragon. CR18 kobold. <laughs> You're in my cave. <laughs> it's cool, don't make yourself at home. Blah. Thanks. That dead look, though. That dead look in the face of the little kobold bird. That is the true terrifying aspect. Feeling insecure, the fighter insists that he can make things just as good as the artificer. Thinking quickly, Dave constructs a homemade megaphone using only some string, a squirrel, and a megaphone. But... Wait, so you made a megaphone from a megaphone and just taped a squirrel to it? That's... <laughs> but is it? That's just a megaphone with extra steps. Bards are too powerful. They can learn mass suggestion. All they have to do is yell, Everybody clap your hands! And make up to 20 people do the cha-cha sit for 24 hours. A level 20 bard can force you to do the cha-cha slide. For a year of the day! This is torture. Imagine you meet this final boss in an adventure, and you just do this and say like, Oh yeah, we'll go back to town and vibe for a bit. And then after one year, when you're basically exhausted, at this point you're just a dehydrated skeleton, we'll come back and just like, you're dead. This is how we solve it. We just dehydrate them and starve them for a year while they do the cha-cha. And then it's an easy battle. Escape room employees reveal the worst things they have seen. We've had around three proposals in the escape room so far. The second was... We were not informed at all. The girl was chained and blindfolded in a small black box room. No idea why you thought that would be a good place to propose? What is... Oh my god! That is just anxiety through the roof. Holy shit! I had been there for 10 hours, and a group was playing a room with a locked door as the main focus of the first half. I kind of stopped watching the screens for a few minutes, only to look back and see that they had used a handcuff key to remove the hinges and take the door off the frame. I couldn't really do anything at that point, so I just kind of had to let them continue. Locked a couple of guys in the cage, and came back, and they had just stripped naked. I just, I just left them to it. As it turns out, real people do in fact approach D&D scenarios like D&D players. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. It seems so unreal when you're sitting there with the party just making up random BS. But in reality, I don't think it's that far-fetched, you know? Humans are silly creatures. Giving the players the ring of grammarian to encourage creativity. <laughs> Arcane PPH, floating PP gift of gay scorching gay sh bish bolt. <laughs> Never give your players infinite creativity and freedom. It can only end in pain and misery. Rogues when they have sneak attack. <clears throat> Take all his D6s to the neck, bish. Rogues in a 1v1. <laughs> Sir, please, I use a triangle for damage. It's basically like throwing pine cones. It just, just not, doesn't do very much. Crappy item idea. Language owl. The small green mechanical owl will teach you to learn languages. Roll an intelligence check. The higher you roll, the shorter it takes to learn a new language. However, on a 1, the owl will try to kill you. Oh, is this just Duolingo, but a little bit murderous? Yeah, that sounds familiar. You know when the notification on Duolingo pop up and like, YOU HAVEN'T DONE YOUR DAILY SPANISH! And then you get a notification just, There is someone at the back door. Duolingo, I wanna see you in D&D. Girls playing D&D! Let's pretend to be the heroes of our own stories! Oh, sounds fun! Boys playing D&D! Let's pretend to be the heroes of our own stories! Sounds fun! You see, it's for everyone! That is so beautiful. Nothing brings people together like a little bit of satanic role-playing. Oh, yes indeed. Fighter. Wait! You've been a silver dragon this whole time? A dragon. Yup, I've just been polymorphed human so you wouldn't be scared. Um, okay, then where's your horde? I horde friends. You are my horde. Rogue, tearing up? Okay, that, that was adorable.
Oh, you see, not all hordes are uh, materialistic. Wizard Council 2021 Banned Spell List Unending PP Barrage Summon Ketamine Ape Greater Baya Blast Transmute Idaho <laughs> Homoerotic Vortex when Ketamine Ape is outlawed, only outlaws will summon Ketamine Ape. You fools have dug your own wizard graves. You see, it's just like in reality, when you outlaw something, you have to consider what it does for like the black market and the underground operations. You really want a black market with Ketamine Apes? I don't think so. My bard, polymorphing into a giant ape to fight the Necro Dragon. Donkey Kong soundtrack during my turn. DM. That is so beautiful. Oh, I love this. The kobolds are only using javelins. <laughs> the kobolds are only using javelins. Oh no! Where did they get the javelins? They must be at least like 500 gold each. What the frick? So we played D&D with my 11-year-old cousin yesterday, and it was his first proper session. He had real bad luck with his dice rolls, and his elf just died. After a solemn pause, looking over his character sheet, he writes Junior next to his name and proclaims, I am here to avenge my father. Kids are like the best creative little creatures ever sometimes. That is beautiful. Haha, <laughs> nothing gets through this armor. 20. <laughs> it really do be like that. Even the most immortal being ever is not immortal to the perfect dice rolls. Mm. I think the best take I've had on stuff like this, though, not necessarily combat when it comes to the roleplay aspect, is that it's supposed to be realistic. You know, a, a 20 doesn't automatically mean that you can do anything, you know? You can't just walk up to the king of a kingdom and be like, uh, please give me your crown and I'm king now, and if I roll a 20, the kingdom is mine. It's like, of course not. He can be like, oh gee, you rolled a 20, you are really charming and convincing, but obviously this is bullshit, so get out of my courtroom. You know, there's st still supposed to be some level of realism or what you can actually do. That's the best balance in the way I've seen it described. 20 just means that you're the ultimate form of charismatic, just being charismatic doesn't mean that you can just convince anyone to do anything. It's not the same thing. Welcome to D&D, where you can live out your wildest fantasies like gainful employment and having charisma. <laughs> I've been real sad the last bunch of days, so I drew some dragons, except I didn't want to draw the whole body. So they're just heads. They are just the heads. <gasps> Look at that dragon head boy. That is so cute. I want one. I want one. Where does it even store the food? Does it have organs? Who cares? Who cares where the organs are? It's fantasy. <gasps> it's so beautiful. BBEG, rogue. <laughs> it seems like the tables have turned again. Paladin, <laughs> not really. Kill the little bastard. See if I care. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, this beautiful best party dynamics in a nutshell. The two bards infiltrating the BBEG stronghold and nailing every stealth roll because the expertise and giving each other inspiration. <laughs> the nameless henchmen and mooks wondering where the music is coming from. What the frick? That is so old. This could be a really funny animation. <laughs> well, who's there? Who's there? Oh, I can't see them. They seem to have perfect stealth. Hey, NPC Steve, how about we just follow, you know, the rock music? No, no, no. no I, I don't know what you mean. No. Ah, NPC logic. The obviously evil, but hot NPC. Mm. Uh, my character, I will spare him. I can fix him. <laughs> Can we adopt him, please? Maybe we can learn him the ways of betterment. Because they're really hot. Players want to start a business. Dungeon Master. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Goblin Brothel. <sighs> Never, ever encourage your players. It is always a horrible idea. When I played my old good old character, Chad Wonderwall, who was a bard, who could only play one song. He had ultimate charisma, so he could automatically charm anything like that, but he only knew one song, so it only worked once. I would play different versions of Wonderwall while the rest of the party had orgies on a ship because the travel took really long. That was like half the session. It, it was me rolling for successful songs and the others rolling for successful intimate activity. My, my group is really questionable. <laughs> it's barely D&D at this point. I'll do anything you want for $50. My players needs a healer. Get in and I'll tell you about my setting while you read the player's handbook. <laughs> that is so good. It's like when you want like, you know, oh, smexy cleaning and you just pay for the cleaning and they can just do whatever, you know, it's gorgeous. After consulting with half-elves, half-orcs, half-dragons, half-devils and many other half-species, it has been decided to give humans a more fitting name. We welcome the slut folk. That's what I mean. 
with all the half breeds. You know, there are not so many half breeds between all the other stuff. You know, they're they're more like you know conservative and monogamous and and the humans are just like woohoo babies. Bard, <laughs> hey bro, what's up with you, fighter? <clears throat> Training, dude. Lighten up, come party. When you were partying, I was studying the blade. Um, okay, dude, but partying gave me magic powers. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> It's so true though! The ultimate bardness. Party, have fun, sleep around, and still be magical. Ah, oh, and sparkly. And charming. I would be such an obnoxious bard. Oh my god. Elves are way better than dwarves. Elves have better magic, better mobility, longer lifespan. You can make funny accent when you play dwarf. I choose him. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Alright, if for who's sitting in the morning? Why do dwarves have axes? You know, wouldn't they have pickaxes? You know, they're underground, there aren't that many trees. Maybe it's because elves live in trees. Damn, what a conspiracy. Paladin. I stabbed the succubus with 14 to hit. DM. He looks at you with 15 AC and asks, Is it in yet? <laughs> oh, my, my sword all of a sudden feels very small and soft. Roll dexterity saving throws. Rogue. Does a 22 succeed? Yes, but you can still take half of I have evasion. Oh. Right, uh, okay, you, you managed to nimbly dodge around the 480 foot wide meteors without a scratch on you. <laughs> it's like the earth explodes, but I have a vision. Never ask a bard his body count, ask a fighter his body count, and a necromancer his body count. <laughs> They're all for very different purposes. DM as everyone arrives. Hi, everyone, welcome! DM as soon as we sit down. <laughs> Darkness engulfs you. Mm, this is so beautiful. I like that, the dramaticness. I have sort of implemented a lot of dramatic music, sometimes even pre-recorded voices in my adventures. So I do like some voice acting with voice changes, and I have it saved on files on my phone, so I play it on a Bluetooth speaker. It is a surprisingly nice spice to like adding, for example, demon voices or, or things you can't really imitate perfectly live. It's a really cool idea. I would try it if I were you. Rogues solving murders. Mm-hmm, yes, detectively. Cleric solving murders. Welcome back, who killed ya? My player solving murders. <laughs> well, of course I know him. He's me. Murder mysteries are so much simpler when you are the murderer yourself. You already know everything. Isn't that just beautiful? Here's the thing that 9 out of 10 dungeon masters don't want you to know. You are not immune to hot lady night. Hold on. Is this the final boss of the adventure? You know, you've been tasked by the village to defeat this like scheming, terroristic, devious master strat stratimatician. And it turns out to be just like, oh, I am swooned. And then the players don't want to do anything because they're so flabbergasted. And oh no, oh, just flipping the whole Disney thing. You know, like in old movies where villains are always ugly, you know? What if they're like hyper freaking attractive and just your type and you're standing there like, oh no. <laughs> Damn it! I would just join the villain. Sorry, sorry, screw the village. They can burn. NBC! <laughs> it is not easy to find a Thieves Guild hideout. The Thieves Guild hideout? Oh, yes, indeed. The red carpet and little sewer entrance. This is this is just Skyrim. Th this is just Skyrim. <laughs> it's so good. Being an elf and watching the rest of the party sleep. <sighs> yes, sleep, you little. Yellow shits. Or just if there's like Twilight, which was supposed to be romantic, but it's just really weird. We need character concepts for bards. Horny bard, a sexual bard. How about a character who isn't completely defined by sexuality? Hmm. Hmm. Get out. <laughs> it's all about naughtiness. Moses tells the people he can't make food because divine intervention is on cooldown. 13th century BC. <laughs> Sorry, boys, I'm out of spells. I need a long rest. <laughs> but we're dire. B -b 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 long rest. Ring of the Grammarian. While wearing this ring, you may change one letter in a spell name to another to create an entirely new spell. Original. Charm person. Changed. Chasm person. Result. Whee! That is so good. Oh my god, it gives me like Scrabble vibes. Oh, you can fight with all your friends in D&D and Scrabble at once. Heck yes. Monk, who made intelligence their dump stat, but decides to multiclass into wizard anyway. I am doing 1000 calculations per second and they're all wrong! <laughs> this is just 
This just gives me freaking Magicka vibes. Have you played Magicka? It's a beautiful little game. It's basically a small wizard game, and like 90% of deaths are team kills. That's basically what it is. You shoot spells and combine things and everything blows up. It's beautiful. A broke having racism in my fantasy world because of realism. Evoke removing racism from the setting completely because it's not fun and does not add to the atmosphere. Bespoke having racism so my players can kill racists. Woo! Because the fantasy is all about living out your wildest dreams. And there is no dream wilder than this. Well, ladies, lads, and lasses, I do hope you enjoyed this video or learned something or maybe a bit of both. Have an amazing rest of your day and enjoy your fantasy games and D&D adventures because I sure as heck will. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day because you do deserve it and I will see you in the very next video. Take care. Mwah.